years of preaching, I've had requests for sermons on a lot of different things. I've had requests for sermons on heaven and angels and war and peace and lots of other things, but by far the number one request that I've had is for a sermon on forgiveness. I think that's because when we hear these words, when we say the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, it throws us into a panic. We want God to forgive us for the things we do, and we have the idea that it is contingent on us forgiving others. The words in the scripture are, forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. But if we're honest about it, we really don't. We know we're not very good at forgiving people. Those who hurt us, and maybe even more, those who hurt the ones we love. More often, we just hang on to that anger and resentment until it becomes a part of us. It's easier to pretend that we're not hurt, to use toughness or sarcasm or simple avoidance to get out of what we know is best, forgiveness. Hey, it's his own problem if he's gonna be that way, we say, denying the fact that the hurt is gnawing somehow in the back of our heads. In the skit that Sherry and Dave did, we heard Sherry saying, well, I'm happier with this team anyway but the same problems followed her to her new group of coworkers. And we know this, we know that's how it works, but we still do it. Do you ever wonder if God does this too? God up there in heaven is going, well, these people are killing each other and hurting each other and breaking about every commandment that I've ever tried to make. And it gets me mad, but I'm just gonna put it in the back of my mind and resent them go on doing my thing, letting my hatred build up for them. I'll just ignore the ones that keep hurting each other because forgiving my children is just way too hard. Of course not. God knows exactly what we're doing. And over and over in the scriptures, we see God calling people out on their sins. He names them. You're worshiping other gods. You're neglecting the poor. You're taking advantage of people. But then God says, sometimes without them even asking for it, I forgive you. Don't do it anymore. And that's it. No grudge, no resentment, no sarcastic remarks. There's a news story that you may have heard recently about an African-American man named Christian Cooper who is on the board of the New York City Audubon Society. He was out photographing birds in Central Park one morning when there was a conflict between him and a young white woman named Amy Cooper, whose dog was off its leash. When she wouldn't put the dog back on the leash, Mr. Cooper started filming her with his camera. The young woman responded by saying she was going to call the police and say that there was an African-American man threatening her life. And she dialed 911 as she yanked her dog back by its collar. Well, the video went viral. And of course, she was the one who was in trouble. She lost her job. She had to return the dog to the rescue where she got it. She was ridiculed. Her actions were investigated by New York City's Commission on Human Rights, and charges were filed against her for filing a false report. And Mr. Cooper, he says that what she did was obviously terrible, but he won't cooperate with the district attorney's office. He says she's already paid a steep price. That's not enough of a deterrent to others, Bringing her more misery just seems like piling on. That's grace. That's forgiveness. Bringing more misery just seems like piling on. He's right, of course. He agrees that what she did was harmful and a mistake that reflects on our society as a whole. 
but he's not into piling on more misery. And make no mistake, the misery is from the outside and from the inside, and holding on to the hurt just spreads the misery to you too. The only way I know to be able to extend that sort of grace is this. You need to realize the depth of God's love for you. You must feel safe enough and confident enough in the arms of our most gracious God. And only then can you let go of all the resentments in your life and put them in God's hands. It doesn't mean you don't remember what happened. It doesn't mean that you think it's okay. It doesn't mean that you don't think it needs to be made right. But when you're invited into the arms of forgiveness herself, the arms of love, the arms of God who we know in Jesus Christ, you're able to confess to God your own sins and know that you are forgiven and that you are still loved just as much. You can remember then that God's love for the other person is equally strong. Then you can rest in that love, in that grace, and you can let go of everything else. Max Lucado writes about forgiveness in a realistic way. He suggests remembering that Jesus came for each one of us, even for our enemies, and we're to pray for them too. He says, does that make forgiveness easy? No. Quick? Seldom. Painless? Forgiveness vacillates. It has fits and starts, good days and bad, anger intermingled with love, irregular mercy. We make progress only to make a wrong turn, step forward and fall back. But it's okay. As long as you're trying to forgive, you're forgiving. It's when you no longer try that bitterness sets in. So keep trying, keep forgiving. It can sure be easy to forget about God's love in this me first world. When we're encouraged to look out for ourselves, for number one, instead of anybody else, None of us can embody the love of God completely, and none of us remember that love all the time. But when you're struggling to forgive someone, or that old resentment starts bubbling up again, try this. Tell God about it. And hear God say to you, You are my beloved. With you I am well pleased. Hear God say it over and over, I have created you and you are mine. How could I forget this one who I love so much? My child was lost and now is found. And rest in that love for a while. Each one of us is that loved by God. After that, try holding up that grudge again and look at how much less important it is than the love that is surrounding you. Forgive yourself just as God has forgiven you. And you can forgive others. This is the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Now live in the joy which this grace provides and share the good news with others.